Hi everyone, this is going to be a rather short video. I just wanted to show you how I organize my coursework in Notability. However, I think this system, this approach can be used for any sorts of notes, for work, for your self-study. I filmed a shorter version of this video for my classmates the other day and some of them commented on how useful they found it because I kind of took me one term to come up with this system and once I did I was like oh this is so much better than the thing I used to do before where all my documents were all over the place. So the guiding principle for me is I wanted to organize my notes in a way that after I'm, I'm done with the class I actually can go back to those notes and uh, make use of them in my work but also of course like having it organized like this makes it so easy and much less stressful to follow the material throughout the semester so here's what i do oh and maybe just one thing before we start uh good notes versus notability why i use the one or the other often get asked that i choose notability for my class notes just because i'm able to record the lectures or the meetings and um, also it's not only that it records it maps my handwriting to the audio so if i want to say to hear what the professor was saying as i was writing this i would just need to tap here and it would start playing from that very moment so that's very convenient if you want to go back to your notes so let's talk about the organization i have a divider here i actually think that the name divider is confusing i would call this a folder because here it is this folder which i named after my school and then within this folder i have subjects which are my individual courses so i think a divider is something that would be within my subject but they call it divider so i have a divider here and then i have all of my courses one subject per course the naming convention that i use here is the code of the course followed by its full name so every one of my subjects has three at least three foundational documents the syllabus the class slides and the notes sometimes i have section notes and some other documents that are foundational but that's specific to a subject these are the three that you can see in every one of my classes syllabus slides notes you probably notice that i name them starting with a zero dot and then i put one dot for syllabus two dot whoops, <laughs> two dots for class slides and three dots for notes. The reason I'm doing that is because Notability has sorting and they sort by name so we can use those numbers to sort our files. So the syllabus is pretty self-explanatory, but then class slides, this is the document that holds my entire slide slides for this class. Notability allows you to append pages to an existing document. So for instance, in week two, I would import the slides from that week. And instead of creating a new document, I would just append them to an existing document. And so by the end of the semester, by the end of the school year, all of my class slides are in this document. Same goes for notes, except that I don't import them every week. I just continue writing in that same document throughout the semester so all of my notes are in one place when i was first trying this system it was in the midst of this class i remember having a separate subject for every sort of this is these are my notes for this class and these are my readings for this class and then within notes i had separate files for each class i think that fragmenting it like this makes it's very hard to use this because eventually you will want to read through skim through your notes very quickly and just opening one then opening the other oh that didn't work for me at all so i find it to be much more user friendly when i can just quickly look through my notes and by the way let's see if i did a good job of this here yeah i normally whenever i don't forget i mark every week with a bookmark and so I can quickly jump from one week to another this way without having separate notes. The files that follow here with the one, two, three, all the way to 13 
are the weekly readings that we were assigned to do. So I import every single reading into my iPad and the readings for week number one are numbered one dot title of that article that we're supposed to read. Week readings for week number two are titled two dot title for this article that we're supposed to read and so on. It's easier to download all of your readings on the computer and rename them on the computer than here on the iPad. And then once you've quickly done all of that on the computer, you can transfer it here and just sort by name and it will be neat and well organized. You might notice that some of my week one have an X next to them. An X is my way of telling me that these readings were optional. I do want them here because the reason I'm taking this course is hopefully to be able to use it in my work later on. And so I might not be able to do the optional reading during the semester just because there's so many things to read, but I will certainly go back to it later on during my work and I have it here. So I know most likely the X's I haven't read them, but also they're, they're here. I like it's, it's easy to locate them. Again, the reason why I'm going with an X is because notability sorts by name, which means the numbers come first. And then after the number, it starts sorting by the title. And X is one of the last letters of the alphabet, meaning that the optional readings, they will always come at the bottom. I don't know why I didn't use a Z and I used an X. Maybe there would be an article that starts with an X. Probably a better idea is to pick a Z. Now, there's another strategy that unfortunately I discovered way too late into my studies and I wasn't able to apply it. Let me see, I've done it in a class that I taught later on, which is this class, I've done it a little bit. So I realized that I could be using emojis indicating whether I like the article, whether I need to reread it, whether I can use it for a certain purpose and maybe I should well, I don't know if I should place the emoji at the very end because some of the titles are so long, I wouldn't be able to see it, but try it and see where to be best place it. But the awesome thing about this is that you can search by your emoji and let's say you marked all of the articles that you think would be valuable for a certain project, you would just enter the emoji and it will pull up all of those articles. I used to write some notes at the beginning of the reading, not here, but I would like leave some notes to myself like, oh my God, I love this article. It would be useful. However, it's harder to locate when you have hundreds upon hundreds of these readings. So yeah, this is pretty much how I organize my notes. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward, but since no one taught me this, it took me trial and error of things like this to eventually come up with a system that really works for me. So yeah, try it out if you want to, or let me know what kind of organizational system you use in your notability, given how the built-in organization is quite bare here. But I think we can do a lot with it. We just need to be very intentional about what kind of process we follow for organizing our notes. That's it for today. I um, hope this video was helpful and see you in the next one. Bye.